a quick review again, and then we'll get right into it. All right, don't forget the um, the determinant's value is a value um, that is a process of a matrix. It's a means to an end, means to an end, means to an end. I can't say that enough. That's really an important concept. Remember, only square matrices have um, a determinant. Make sure you're aware of the different ways those things can look, right? I mean, there's three different um, aspects of how you can make a determinant, the notation. So just be aware. Uh, we went through two by twos. Got to know that formula. Got to know that formula. Got to know that formula. And then on a three by three, a little bit different there. You got the diagonal method. And we'll deal a little bit more with that with the homework tonight. All right, then we started looking at um, Laplace and, and his methodology. And so that if you try to memorize this, you're going to be in trouble. You really just got to understand the concept because there's just too many letters to memorize. You're going to mess that up. You just got to get the concept down. And if you get the concept down, then you can deal with anything. So let's go ahead and try to apply this to the example that's here. All right, so we've got an example, and we've got matrix J, and instead of doing the vertical method, we're going to do Laplace's method. And just to make it simple, I'll go off the top row. Okay, one thing that trips up students is right off the bat, I have to be c concerned about the multipliers. Top left is always positive. Then you have to alternate. So the next one's negative, and the next one's positive. OK, so I'm going to scribble on mine to make it clear what we're doing. And you, you don't want to be scribbling on yours, because then you're going to cover up everything. But I'm going to scribble on mine to just be clear of what we're doing. So if first off, I deal with the 1, right, because I'm going across that top row. So I want that 1 as a coefficient, as a scalar multiplier of that matrix. And then you have to write the resulting matrix. And if you remember, now I'm going to have too many things there. Let me get rid of all this. Let me do this. All right, so again, I'm dealing with the one. Remember, you get rid of the rest of its row. You get rid of the rest of its column, right? When you get rid of the rest of the row and the rest of the column, you can clearly see the matrix that's left, right? The first row is 3, 4, and the second row is negative 1, negative 6. So you got 3, 4, negative 1, and 6. And that's the first one. Okay, the second one you can write two ways. You can just write plus 3, or if you want to, you can do minus the minus 3, right? Is the scalar multiplier. So again, you got to get rid of the rest of the row, and you got to get rid of its column, right? And hopefully now you clearly see you got a negative 2, 4 top row, 2, 6 bottom row. Right. So negative 2, 4 is the top row, and 2, 6 is the bottom row, and i got to stop writing so big. All right, and then the last one is that plus 5 scalar multiplier. And again, get rid of its row, get rid of its column, and you can see the resulting matrix is a negative 2, 3, 2, negative 1. Okay, so we still have to go through all of the 2 by 2 determinants. All right, so 1 is boring. I'll just stick it out there just for clarity. So again, normally you guys are thinking this, 3 times 6 is 18. Be careful, right? Going the other way is minus. So the way I think in my head, minus 4 times a minus 1 is a positive 4. And that's going to be a 22. 
So next is a plus 3 multiplier. And again, you're doing the diagonals, right? So what would the first number be? Come on, think now. you got to think negative 12. And what's the second number? Positive or negative? Negative 8. Remember, you got to go. You start negative going back the opposite direction. Always going right to left, you got to start negative. So negative 4 times a 2. All right, and then the last one, you got a 5 multiplier. What's the first number on the diagonal? 2. The other number? Negative 6, right? Okay, so I think we end up with 22 here. And a positive 3 times a negative 20. That's a negative 60. And a 5 times a negative 4 is a negative 20. And we found that the value of the determinant is a negative 58. Okay. You really going to use it for a 3 by 3? Not really. You could. The diagonal method's probably a little quicker for a 3 by 3. But when you get into 4 by 4s, 5 by 5s, it's really the method you have to use. And again, you would hope you have some zeros there. Because remember what I said to you guys on Tuesday. You can choose any row and any column you want. Now, before I get too far away, let me just remind you. Back on Tuesday, we did this matrix, right? And we got a determinant of negative 58. And we just did the exact same matrix. And we better get the same value, right? doesn't matter which way you do it. And surely we got a negative 58. Okay, if I wanted to, I could do the first column. If I did the first column, now when you start dealing with the plus minus factors, again, you have to start top left. That would be plus. This would be minus a minus 2. And then that would be a plus 2. Right for the row or column that you're dealing with, you got to deal with that plus minus factor. I often wonder who in the world came up with this stuff. But again, it's the same procedure. Same procedure from there on out. What if you wanted to deal? I mean, you can deal with any row. You can deal with any column. Um, what if you dealt with the second column? So again, you're just this is that plus is just for thinking purposes. But now when you get to the column that you're dealing with, okay, that's going to be negative and negative. That's going to be a positive, positive, and this is, again, going to be negative and negative. Right? you got to apply that plus minus factor to the row or column you're dealing with. So one more time here. Let's suppose we want to deal with the bottom row. So again, you're, let me go a little higher for some of you guys. So again, you're dealing with the plus minus factor, right? Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Now look, don't lose your attention right now. That minus there in red was only to get me to the third row. That number is a negative 2, and it's just a negative 2. It's not a positive 2 now. Doing this plus and this minus was only for me to determine that I started with a plus down there. And so be careful there. That is gone now when you start to make up the matrices. Okay, do you understand that? The plus minus plus thing it's only to be able to get you to the row or column you're dealing with, and it only involves the numbers in the row or column that you're figuring out the determinant for. Got that? Do you understand? One more time. If I were going to figure this out, you always start at the top left for a plus, minus you alternate, right? And I get down here and say, okay, the first one of my row is a plus, therefore the second of my row is a minus, and the third of my row is a plus. But this minus was only used to get me down there to figure out the plus minus of the row I'm using. All right, be careful there because students make mistakes there, and then they end up getting it wrong. All right, we'll come back to this later on as our matrices get more and more complex, but you can use it. All right, let's get to Kramer's rule. 
can't believe nobody asked any questions in all of that. Let me ask you this: Is like, is it, are these both of these classes? Are they kind of classes where everybody gets laughed at when they ask questions. Is that the issue? People laugh at you. You just all understand perfectly. It's it's clear as crystal. Yeah, <laughs> I know that's not the case. Otherwise, I'd be some millionaire somewhere. All right, Kramer's rule uses the values of the determinants. Uses the values of the determinants to solve systems of equations. Okay, so we did determinants so that we can now use Kramer's rule to solve systems. And I didn't have this to where you had to write anything in, but that's the key right there. This is the formula to solving a system with Kramer's rule. So you take the determinant of the x values, quote unquote, whatever that means, and divide it by capital D is the determinant for the matrix of the system. And that'll give you the x value. And then you take the determinant of the y matrix, whatever that means, and divide it by the same system determinant, and you'll get the y value. And if it's a 3 by 3, take the determinant of the Z matrix, whatever that is, and divide it again by that same system determinant, and you'll get Z. And if you had four variables, you do the exact same thing, or eight variables, and programmers just program in the formula, and then it takes care of however many things there are. Okay, so that doesn't mean a whole lot yet, so let's go through and figure out how to use it. All right, the determinants of X, Y, and Z are found by replacing the column of that variable. With the equation solutions. Replace the column of that variable with the equation solutions. Let me go a little higher for you guys. Okay, so let's do an example. Here's the here's our system right here. Okay, so you got this system. Let's go ahead and figure out the determinant of this system. All right, so first off, we got to write the matrix. The matrix of the system comes from the coefficients of the variables. So the matrix of the system comes from the coefficients of the variables. That's where this is going to come from. We did this already. Remember, keep things in order. If the first equation is x, then y, the second should be x, then y. And really, you should you should just go alphabetical order. Somebody's, I don't know if it's quiz or homework, you had your x's and y's swapped. I um, think you swapped everything. So technically, it was okay. It was the one where you had to write... Um, you had to write the matrix, and so you wrote the matrix, and then you had to do the column with the x, y, and one of you guys did y, x, which was really true because you swapped all your x's and y's in your first one, and it really is okay. Again, for ease sake, just go alphabetical order. If you go x, y, then you got to go x, y. Okay, so that's clear as mud, I'm sure. Coefficients of the first equation, right, 3 and 1? And the coefficients of the second equation are 1 and negative 2. So we're going to figure out the determinant for this system. Diagonal method, right? First number is a negative 6. Second number is a negative 1. And therefore, hopefully you agree the value of the determinant for the system is negative 7. Is everybody okay with that? So let me, let me do this. Let me go back again. These are the coefficients of the x's, and that column is the coefficients of the y's, right? The first column came from the coefficients of the x's, and the second column came from the coefficients of the y's. Okay, that's not hard. So now we got to write two more matrices, one to get the determinant of the x. So let's start this way again. Supposed to be x column and y column, right? The 
the difference is now I've got to apply this part. I've got to replace the column of that variable with the equation solutions. So what, what am I doing right now? I'm doing X, right? So I'm doing X. So I have to replace X's column with the solutions, the 6 and the 2, because I'm dealing with the X, right? I'm doing the determinant of X, and the solutions go in. Do you ever wonder who figured out all this stuff to begin with? Some brainiac somewhere. Okay, and then the Y column is just the Y coefficients. And again, if you're looking in the box, right, the coefficient of the Y in the top is 1, and in the bottom is negative 2. So there's the determinant for X. How are we going to do the value? Vertical, uh, diagonal method, right? 6 times negative 2 is a negative 12, and then a negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2. Ultimate value, negative 14, right? Okay, yeah, Nate. Why is it negative? Because whenever you deal with determinants, whenever you go backwards from right to left, you always start with a negative. So in formula form, Come on, give me that thing. It's this negative right here. So what I always do, Nate, is whatever that number is, look at E right here. Look right here. What I always do is I just think negative this first one right off the bat. So I'm thinking a negative 1 times a negative 3 for a positive 3. That's how I think of it in my mind. Backwards always a negative, and that will mess you up because if you miss that, then all your values are going to be off. Okay, so determinant of x. Can you write the determinant, write the matrix to figure out the determinant for y? Here, I'll give you a hint. There you go. I'm sure you like that. Use your color. You replace the y values with 6 and 2, right? And what are the x coefficients? 3 and 1. And what's the value of the y determinant? Go ahead and figure out the value of the y determinant. Oh, no. Oh, my. And the value of the y determinant is? Zero. Okay. All right. We're ready for... Yeah, it can be a zero. The x, y, z, any variable value for the determinant can be zero. I'll talk about the system determinant being a zero in a minute. Okay. So let's finish off Kramer's rule. We're ready now to get the value of x. So again, just for clarity's sake, remember this is the determinant of x divided by the system determinant, right? It's the determinant of x. It's from the formula right up above in your notes in the green box. So x is going to be a negative 14 divided by a negative 7. And we know the x value is 2, right? In the beginning, we only found the determinant for the x, which is a means to an end, right? Now we just applied the means to the end with these determinants and got an actual value. And you're going to do the same thing with y, right? y is the determinant of the y divided by the system determinant. If you had 3, you'd be doing z as well. So y is 0 divided by negative 7, and that's no problem. That's a 0. Hey, what kind of system is this? How would you classify this system? Consistent and independent, right? What would have happened if the system determinant was zero? What kind of system would it have been if the system determinant was zero? You're dividing by zero. So can you divide by zero? And the answer is no. 
And so inconsistent, consistent, dependent. I, I think both are possible. I think it might be consistent, dependent, though. And I'm guessing there. Let me go ahead and graph these two lines. So you got the first one, right? 3x plus y equals 6. So let me put it in y uh, equals mx plus b form, negative 3x plus 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You got a point at the y-intercept of 6. And we're going down 3 into the right one. Down 3 into the right one. And we've got a line right there. All right, that's the first one. So again, I'm just trying to tie everything together. I'm just trying to show you how it's all the same thing, that's all. You wouldn't normally be graphing them. I'm just graphing them to show you, hey, this is what we did way back when we were graphing. We're just finding the value of a system. The second one ends up being y equals half x minus 1. Trust me, if you solved it for y, put it in the y equals mx plus b, you get a half x minus 1. So y intercept of negative 1, go up 1 into the right 2, and sure enough, look at where they intersect. Exactly, exactly where you would expect at 2, 0. Okay, right where you would expect at 2, 0. And of course you got to come up with the same value. Remember, four ways of solving matrices. Graphing, just showed it to you. We didn't do substitution. We didn't do elimination. You could, and we just did matrices. So we did two of the four right there. All four are going to give you the same value, of course. Okay, so let's do a triple. Okay, so remember, what looks like absolute value means the determinant of A, and A is the system. So look, I'm just keep trying to give you the different looks because who knows what, you know, you're taking the ACT, you're taking the SAT, you're in college. What's your professor going to prefer? Does he like that notation or does he like a big fat D? I don't know. But you got to be used to whatever it is. Okay, so for time's sake, let's do this thing together. If you're confident, go ahead and write the matrix. Remember, this is the system matrix. For time's sake, I'll just give you the values once you write them to save some time. So write the matrix. If you get stuck, you can look up. So if you know what you're doing, it should be quick, right? Top row, 1, negative 1, 2. Middle row, 2, 1, negative 1. Bottom row, 1, 1, negative 3. Everybody okay with that? Just We're just simply writing in the coefficients. Okay. How would you solve this? Laplace or diagonal? I, I use the diagonal. I think it's quicker. So just for time's sake, do all the diagonals and all of that, you get a negative 5. Tonight, when you do homework, you can practice getting the values on the diagonals. Okay, so we've got the value for the system determinant. Now we got to do the x, y, z determinants. Okay, write the determinant for the x. Write the matrix to give you the determinant for the x. Let me get your attention for a moment. It, you, your brain can do them any way your brain makes sense to you. This is the way I do them. I knew I got to replace the X column with the answer. So I wrote that first. I did 
3, negative 6, negative 10 right off the bat. Because I know they have to go in for the values of the x. And then what I did was I looked up here and I just rewrote what was there. That's what I did. I mean, you can look at the original. It doesn't really matter. But I know the rest. The y and the z are negative 1, 2, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 3, right? And I wrote it in. However you want to do it, if you want to keep looking at the original, fine. But you just got to be careful. You got to get a correct answer. Okay, when all is said and done here, this thing is a 10. Which, by the way, if you know what's going on, you already know the value of the x variable is a. Value of the x variable is a. It's a negative 2, right? Because remember, the x is going to be the determinant of x, which is the same as this thing, right? The other notation. Divided by the system determinant, which is that. And it's a 10 divided by a negative 5, and it's a negative 2. Okay, so once you get it down... Go ahead and write the matrix for the y. Again, I write the column first with the answers. Then I just look up over here, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, 1, negative 3. Piece of cake. All right, when you're all said and done, do the diagonal method. This thing ends up being a negative 5. So you can see the y is going to be a negative 5 divided by a negative 5, and that's going to be a 1. Because, again, we did the determinant of y divided by the system determinant. And the z... Again, I'm going to fill in that Z column first. 3, negative 6, 10. Then I'm going to look up to my matrix. 1, negative 1, 2, 1, 1, 1. And when you run that, you end up with a negative 15. Now, you can get fractions here and stuff. And honestly, these are a little bit easier to deal with fractional values. Because you won't get the fraction till the end, which is easy then. It's right, it's right at the end. So the z is going to end up being negative 15 divided by negative 5, and that's a 3. And your final answer, negative 2, 1, 3, point of intersection, right? little long, but not horrible. Pitfalls for mistakes. All right, so to get all the way down there to get a correct answer, how many things you got to do? All right, you got to write this and not miss any of the numbers. One, you got to do one, two, three, four, five, six multiplications and six additions to get that. You got to write that, do six multiplications and six additions to get that. You got to write this and then do six multiplications and six additions to get that. And then write that and then do six and six to get that. And then you got to remember this and that and that. Just a few things. It's math. Lee was counting. How many are there? All right. I thought you were counting. Like, mouth like 30 or something. I don't know. It's a lot. That's math. All right. So they want you to end up with the correct answer when you're done because it doesn't help to be wrong. All right. Let's do the last thing. Determinants can also be used to find the area of a triangle if you know the... Coordinates of the vertices, and you know the formula. Cool. We can find the area of a triangle. That's awesomely awesome. Okay, so here's the formula. Pretty simplistic. Plus or minus. Why is that there? Um, can area be negative? No. But the matrix value can end up negative, and therefore negative and negative is positive, and it gets you back to positive. 
So you just you just have to understand the only reason that plus minus is there is to help students to remember that your final answer has to be positive. Always, it's area. Unless you got a black hole or something. Okay, so what do you do? You do plus minus, make sure the area ends up positive, multiply by a half. Why by a half? I don't know, maybe because the normal area of a triangle formula is, class, one half base times height, right, is the normal area formula. Um, one half, and then the determinant of this matrix. And the matrix isn't that bad. It's the coordinates of the points, and the last column is ones. Who came up with that? I don't know. It's pretty brilliant. Okay. And so away you go. Let's go ahead and do it. So we have plus minus a half. X coordinate point A. Negative 1. Let's do all the x-coordinates. x-coordinate point B, negative 1. x-coordinate point C, 3. I'm just following the color here for your sake. Let's do the y's. Now, again, make sure you go in the same order. y-coordinate point A, 4. y-coordinate point B, 1. y-coordinate point C, 1. And the last columns are always ones. Uno, uno, uno. Okay, run that. I'll let you guys do the diagonals. Come on, it's a bunch of ones. Man, oh man. I'll tell you.